What's going on guys? Scott from phasingplayer.com here. You've looked at the title of this video, you know what I'm talking about. It's in the thumbnail. I'm looking to talk about what I think is Splatter's most underrated release of all time. They have the classics, they got the Food Chain Magnate, the Indonesia, the Bus, Great Zimbabwe, Rosen Boats, you know, all, all these games that people love, people just regard as some of the greatest strategy games, greatest economic games ever made. But there's one game of theirs that I think gets a real bad rap. Honestly, the only time it ever comes up is when people are going to dunk on it. And it's always about how it looks. It's rarely about how it plays. Because I think a lot of people didn't play it. But that is a shame, and I'm hoping that some people will watch this video, give the game a shot. I'm talking about what should be a modern classic, Khan. Khan from Splatter, I think, is their most underrated game, and one of the most underrated strategy games I've ever played. And I'm basing that underrated fact on the the idea that people only talk about it to say how bad it looks. Look, I mean, look, I'm the, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pretend like this is some super great high level art. I think it's charming in its own way. Uh, it looks kind of like Roads and Boats. I think it's the same artist that did it, but um, there are more people <laughs> depicted in this, and the, it's a little it's a little goofy. Some of the people are a little goofy looking. Honestly, reminds me a little bit of that, like, 1990s MTV-style liquid television sort of vibe. Uh, like I said, it's got a charm. The game is from, like, 2002, I think. It's one of their older, like, big-boxed releases. They did, like, clamshell VHS releases in the, the early 90s or, or mid-90s. Um, but this game, from the early 2000s, Khan, super recommend it. It is a, a, a logistics game, like many of their titles, where you are making movies uh, in a pretty abstracted sort of way, but you're collecting resources. You're collecting resources like actors, um, scripts, special effects, and you are piecing them together. You're collecting the right resources to piece them together into a movie of one of three types. It's like action movie, um, sci-fi movie, romance movie, and you uh, make the movie and then release it to score points. And when you release a film, uh, the you get some points, but then the the next um, person that scores that sort of movie gets fewer points. So the 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 more you make one kind of movie, the less valuable it becomes in the future. Uh, kind of a supply and demand, supply and demand sort of thing. The game has this uh, this system where you take these tiles and you put them down on the table to create uh, kind of a map. Okay, and the map is gonna be a map of resources you can gather. So the tiles are gonna be granting you like um, scripts, computer chips, uh, actors, stuff you'll need to like ultimately make your movies. And you collect those resources from the tiles by building a network of sticks, which is actually not dissimilar, I guess, to how you lay sticks in a game like Bus from them. In fact, it's the same style of component. Uh, these long sticks, these long and thin sticks that you can't find Amabel Holland at Hollenspiel, finds them for her games uh, in bulk, but you can't find them like um, as a consumer, like individual pieces, which is a bummer because I like those. I, I, but I digress. You lay these sticks down and the tiles they connect to, the hexes they connect to, uh, will grant you resources at the end of your turns. And you, uh, you want to grow your network to collect the right resources to make the, the most val valuable kinds of movies. But there's this really aggressive blocking that goes on because you can only have one stick, one, one network connection per hex side. They sort of, they, they, you have two hexes and they, the stick bridges uh, the two hexes. And those are the two resources that stick would grant you. It has to be a contiguous connection. So you have to have, you know, one stick after the other. You can't just drop them anywhere you want. And you only get a handful of them. There are actually very few. So you make these tough decisions about where you're going to put them and then how you're going to rearrange them later if you need to. And the game includes this option for neutral connections that any player can use. They're, they're these kind of funny cardboard cigar pieces that I think are meant to represent like uh, the the old men running Hollywood. And if you can, you know, uh, um, have them take a liking to you, they'll help you make connections. But they're they're open to anyone with with a, a checkbook right so any of those cigar connections can be used by any player 
The game is pretty fast playing. It, I, most of the games I've played of it, I've played it a handful of times at different player counts, two, three, and four players is what it supports. It's probably best at three and four. Um, the game honestly plays in like an hour to 90 minutes at kind of the top end, in my experience. It's easy to teach. It plays fast. It's got some really clever, really, really aggressive uh, route building as well as resource management, because you can only hold so many resources at one time. And that means you need to be careful with what you're collecting and how you're building your route. There are these tiles, these party tiles, that kind of come together to create these large mono hexes uh, that, that have like tricky ways of getting into the party. You have to be able to find an invite to the party to get in, but once you're in, uh, you can sort of bridge large gaps of space with a single a single connection instead of having to draw between you know a bunch of different hexes, so there, there's some clever play in how you're placing the tiles and how you're building your network. And it's a really clever game. It's really good. It's got that splattered DNA, that that very simple rules but really complex strategy aspect to it. And and if you're if you're a splatter head, you're, this is gonna blow your mind. Right now, at the time of this recording, honestly, probably any time for the last, like, two or three years and potentially going forward, you can collect this game on eBay, sometimes opened many times in shrink, for, like, 40 or 50 US dollars shipped to your door. There are times when it's, like, 30 bucks shipped. It'll be, like, a $12 auction and, like, 12 or $15 shipping. Um, it's wild that this game is going for so cheap when it's so good. It's something that I will happily play basically whenever whenever requested, and I will request it myself uh, at times. Is it better than your food chain magnates or your Indonesias? Um, it's a different kind of game, so that's I, I, I know I'm the one that just asked that question, and now I'm saying I can't really answer that question. But I think it is if, if like the big five or six splatter games are the big games, and those are all like S-tier games, this is maybe like an A-tier game. It's still really good. I don't know if it's going to enter, if it had better art, you know, I don't know if it would enter the pantheon of like Food Chain Magnate or Indonesia, but I think it would be in those talks. And I think that uh, if more people were to play it and give it a shot, get past this kind of funky, this funky art, um, which is also present on the tiles, you, uh, I, th I think you'd find a game that maybe you'd really enjoy. And for like half the price of many other splatter games, because a lot of splatter games are like a hundred bucks to get it to your door in the in the United States. This you can get for like under 50. It's wild. And this is maybe the best thing yet. You flip over those splatter games, you got that your food chain magnet. Yo, what, what the heck is this food chain magnet about? You're gonna flip it over. There's nothing on the back. Not the case with Khan. Khan has, look at this, it's got information on here. It's in German. It's in English. It's got also it's in Dutch. It's got these languages on the back, your choice of languages. It's got pictures of the game all set up. Um, it's got art on the sides, this is full of art, and it's full of strategy and clever play, and it won't break the budget. Check out Khan, and that's the video.